some of each or something else. Perfect. Um, and uh, I've been, you know, Justin said, uh, really need to look at bundle more closely than, than I, I'm sorry, that was Chris, I think, you need to look more closely at bundle than you think you do. Um, and then consider putting a TLS ID in the SDP and uh, using the fingerprint mechanism in a peer-to-peer -peer SDP example. And then uh, the, our favorite question from the previous uh, talk, uh, are we signaling some kind of multimedia, uh, of media-friendly congestion control? And if so, what do we, you know, what do we need to say? So uh, what happens next, I think, uh, if, if we go to the next slide, um, yeah, you can go to the next slide. Yeah. So um, I'm going to continue to track uh, the uh, RTDP over quick encapsulations proposals, and I'll continue to add new uh, issues and propose text in GitHub. I'll publish updates when I have significant text changes. I may be able to, I may be able to have significant check, uh, text changes before ITF 113. Uh, I appreciate feedback and I appreciate proposed text and that can happen on the mailing list, which I am subscribed to or in GitHub. Uh, I'm not ado uh, requesting adoption at this time, basically as long as AVT Core does never adopted RTP over a quick draft. Uh, I don't think this one needs to be adopted any place either. And if the draft is adopted, the AVT Cores uh, will request uh, M Music Review eventually at the right time. So any questions or comments beyond that? Roman? So I, I have a, a kind of like a maybe somewhat like ignorant question, but uh, is, uh, is there any situation when RTP over quick will work with ICE as one of the candidates? So for instance, in combination with uh, like ICE, uh, ICE TCP and ICE UDP and RTP uh, quick being uh, an additional candidate type, or is it, uh, or RTP or Click kind of supposed to exist as a completely independent uh, a protocol and entity? So, uh, in the peer to peer case, there was an uh, a, uh, experiment in Chromium where it ran over ice. So, uh, yes, that can that can work. Yeah, uh, Bernard, just for my for my information, did that require uh, anything? Uh, any any RFC nine thousand type changes? Uh, well, it, it the experiment was done with GQuick, but uh, it, it basically the the thing it would need would uh, be the multiplexing draft, which is an ABT core, just so you can you know mix it yeah, with other right, stuff like right. stun and turn. But right. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. didn't it didn't require. It was just it was just really just quick over ice. So okay. No, yeah. But uh, my question actually was slightly different. So you are running uh, quick over ice, just using the general packetization, uh, like when you run, for instance, over TCP or via UDP. Uh, but there, uh, you don't use quick as the same level of protocol as UDP and TCP in the kind of like the ice stack. Is that no, correct? You do. You do. It's just no. I think, I think this is asking for an, a quick as a separate candidate. So like, you know, basically like the way you like how for HTTP, you race TLS quick here, you would have quick as a, a nice candidate. So you'd say does quick work or does regular UDP work? Sort of the uh, the inverse of what you're talking about. So it's ice over quick rather than quick over ice, if you will. Yes, that's correct. Cool. Uh, and thank you. And thank you. Thank you all for that exchange. Uh, but Justin? I was just going to speak to that. I mean, I, I think that right now we should be thinking of quick largely as a drop in replacement for like DTLS or DTLS SRTP. And so it sort of flows over whatever transport exists rather than being a candidate uh, type in, an, in its own right. Like there might be some interesting things we could do with trying to recreate ice behaviors within quick later, but I don't think that's something we want to go bite off now. Okay, understood. I just wanted to kind of see where it fits in the stack of things, if it's a UDP replacement or kind of RTP and higher level. Of... I think I got DTLS replacement is the easiest way to think about it. Okay, okay, understood, thank you. Yeah, and that, act that actually gets back to uh, some discussion that's in the, I think if, if you go to the previous slide, um, 
the the thing about double encryption was uh, basically, and I, I we we have had some comments on there. If anyone was to click on Sharp One, um, and and look at the issue, uh, but basically basically that um, quick encryption is going to be end to end between quick endpoints. And I was I will I will say this just as an example of something that's likely to change between now and IETF one thirteen. I was trying to be cute about uh, giving hints to a middle box uh, that uh, this stuff coming in over RTP over quick on one side that needs to go out over RTP over something else on the other side. Uh, needed to be using one of the secure profiles, and I've actually gotten some some pretty uh, pretty uh, coherent feedback that I was not doing that I was not doing the right thing there. So uh, basically, basically, yeah. <laughs> um, so basically, like I say, that, that that's going to be changing. So, um, but but yeah. And uh, and, and uh, like I said, is it? I, I'm expecting I'm expecting changes on most, if not all, of these issues, or based on most, if not all, of these issues. Roman, uh, yeah. uh, so. Uh... In like with double encryption, are we also dealing with like a double authentication overhead? I think we are trying to uh, not do that. Okay. So, uh, so you know, the basic basically, we would always use the same uh, AVT profile for anything coming in over quick, and uh, then we would talk in AVT core about what the right answer was for what should happen when something is coming in over RTP over quick um, at a middle box. Yeah, I think if we want, you know, encryption over more than one transport leg, that's getting into what S frame S packet is doing. So we should think about S frame S packet in, in this context, but we shouldn't try to do anything else right. for double yeah. encryption. And like I say, I, I am. I am a humble, I'm writing a humble SDP draft. <laughs> but uh, one of the things that happened with me doing that was that uh, questions like the ones we're talking about now uh, just pop out all over the place. Justin? Yeah, it just made me think of one other knock-on thing here is that the short tags that Harold was talking about in his proposal uh, you know, we would have to do that at the quick level if we're actually going to do that, uh, you know, using quick encryption, you know, or if we're actually, you know, using the quick encryption rather than some sort of DTL, SR, SRTP uh, sort of key extraction and then like SRTP encryption. Uh, and that would be a whole new set of complications where we have to kind of negotiate with uh, the quick stack to, you know, have shorter authentication tags, at least for some packets. So uh, that might be an issue to, to consider as well. Seriously, things pop out every time, you know, every every time I touch, uh, every time I touch this draft. <laughs> quick touches the entire stack. So you touch quick, you touch the entire stack. Well, show, yeah. me, sh show, me, show me here on the protocol stack where quick hurts you. Any other? I'm not seeing anybody else in queue, I don't think. No, I don't see anyone else. So, but, right with that. Okay. So, I, I definitely want to thank people for uh, mm. feedback here and feedback that I've already gotten uh, in email and in, and in GitHub. Have a great day. Okay. Thank you, Spencer. And next, we have the RTP payload for V3C, which I think is Lori. Is that right? Yes. Uh, hey, I hope everyone can hear me just fine. Yes. And I see that we're running short on time, so I'll try to be quick and to the point. Uh, no pun, pun intended there. Uh, the most important thing is obviously was that obviously on the first page, which was a link to the draft that we drafted with uh, Lukash. But then if we just move on, skip 
a couple of slides to the uh, to the next one, please. Yeah, here. So just a quick recap. So um, or like an introduction. So about the volumetric video, which is essentially just time three D information, uh, which we can these days capture with the various sets of different devices like Kinect, Azure, and Apple's Apple iPhones and so on. And uh, considering that these sort of devices are becoming more common, so is volumetric video. So there are new challenges that are in introduced by the increasing popularity of this type of content, which is mainly how to compress this information, how to store it, and how to deliver the data to through the network. Next slide, please. And so MPEC, the organization responsible for some of the video standards, is also looking at this particular problem and is looking to reuse much of the 2D uh, video coding assets that have been uh, developed within the organization so far. And here's a list of a couple of standards that are looking on the compression part, so mainly part 5 and part 12. Uh, both of those use this same V3C bitstream format, which is defined in this uh, part 5. And just V3C comes from the words visual volumetric video-based coding. So whenever I'm talking about V3C, I'm obviously referring, referring to that, uh, after, uh, that set of words. And uh, yeah, so then there's the part 10, which describes the storage and uh, streaming related aspects re related to V3C coded content. And next slide, please. And um, here's the couple of the key uh, components that we need to understand when we talk about V3C coded uh, encoding or V3C bit streams. So V3C encoder actually decomposes this 3D representation into various components like geometry, occupancy, and attribute information, which can be encoded using traditional 2D video coding technologies. And in addition to those video coding, uh, video coded components, there's a metadata, also known as Atlas data uh, component that describes how those video coded components can be projected back into the 3D representation. And uh, this uh, metadata, i.e. Atlas data, is then compressed using the technologies descri described in part five uh, document uh, that uh, was listed in the previous slide. And uh, below there's a short diagram um, explaining how a 3D content goes uh, through this segmentation and ends up being compressed by these 2D video uh, codex and then on the other, other side how the v3c bit stream gets then demultiplexed and decoded and reconstructed back into this 3d representation next slide please uh, so the, on this slide there's just okay. a um, mo did you have a comment now or did you want to wait till the end of the presentation uh, we can just handle the comment as they go comments as they come okay. so okay yeah mo? um yeah, just I had a question about the codec agnostic part. Uh, do you mean specifically MPEG codecs can easily go into this, or could you truly put any codec, even AV1 or a new ML codec, that doesn't share any of the common uh, MPEG NAL unit structures of AVC, HEVC, or VVC? As long as those codecs can be ingested into uh, bit streams, I don't see why they couldn't. Uh, be used. So it's it's true. It, it should be truly codec independent. Thanks. Um, yeah, sure. Um, then moving to the next. Uh, oh, this one. So this one is just an, uh, like an illustration how the 3D content uh, gets projected into 2D content. So like for those who want to study it a bit more. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, why do we need the RTP format? So MPEG has been working on this compression and uh, storage and delivery of V3C content in its own scope. And even though Dash may have these low latency and live profiles, it's still not very suitable for a very low latency use cases such as teleconferencing. So that means that we don't really have all the uh, enablers in place for real-time low latency V3, V3C distribution. And considering that there's a lot of overlap with the V3C content uh, or V3C uh, bit streams and video coding technologies, uh, we were thinking that using some of these audio video RTB payload formats as the starting point uh, would make sense uh, for us to. Uh, next slide, please. 
So uh, in this one, we were uh, looking at what's already out there in the uh, in different RFCs and what is missing if we want to ingest V3C content or stream V3C content over over RTP. So obviously, these video con components could be uh, streamed using the existing payload formats or um, yeah, like uh, like has been already specified in in, in different RFCs. Uh, but in addition, we might want to uh, consider looking at uh, specifying some set of uh, V3C specific payload format parameters that could be then associated with those video video streams. Um, then there's the V3C Atlas component, which doesn't have its own RTB payload format yet, but which we would like to um, uh, develop. And the good thing about this about this one is that it's actually using the same sort of high-level syntax as the HEVC, uh, which is reusing this null unit. And we were thinking that a lot of the work that has already gone into a, uh, specifying HEVC payload format could be um, reflected here as well. And in addition to this, uh, these two uh, components, uh, there, there would be some uh, grouping that could be poss possibly uh, considered. So we, could, uh, we would like to group these Atlas components with the different V3C components. And for that, we could use the technologies in RFC uh, 5888. Uh, which specifies this type of grouping of different uh, media streams. And lastly, we might want to introduce some bundling as well, uh, which would allow us to essentially stream these different RTP streams over, the, over a single transport. And that has also been uh, studied by IATF in RFC 8843. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, here's the kind of overview of the draft. So in the draft, we obviously provide a lot of the background information, but mostly try to focus on these different packets uh, for the RTP payload format for V3C, which is quite similar to how video uh, payload formats have already been specified in previous specs. And uh, then there's the different trans transmission modes, which essentially more or less the same as has been already uh, done for HEVC. But uh, in, then in addition, there's this different uh, payload format parameters and signaling in STP that uh, might uh, require a bit of work. And lastly, there's the grouping and bundling of different V3C components. Uh, next slide, please. And just to kind of um, keep us um, like concise, we would like to keep the spec quite simple, uh, reuse a lot of the existing work that has gone in, uh, like in the uh, different uh, video payload formats, as well as these grouping and uh, bundling um, technologies. And um, yeah, just like with the core V3C, uh, like um, state of mind, we want to reuse a lot of the video coding technologies that already is out there. So we would like to maintain that kind of principle here. And that's that. I guess my kind of my question for everyone here would be how do we kind of uh, progress this? I'm very novice at, at uh, these meetings. So this is actually my first IETF kind of meeting. So yeah. Mo, please. Um, yeah, I think this makes sense. And uh, I would encourage you to use VVC as a model, not any of the earlier standards. And so in particular, uh, talk with uh, Stefan Winger about some of the simplifications that were done for VVC. For example, it deprecated a lot of the, you know, uh, MRMT and, and uh, MRST modes, all the multiplexing modes uh, were, were eliminated and uh, complicated modes of aggregation like uh, uh, multi-time aggregation and things like that were eliminated. You can also look at AV1's RTP format, which also has some simplifications. Um, instead of uh, separate aggregation and fragmentation, there's a combined ag-frag mode, which allows you to just basically, you know, start and continue and fragment wherever you want, aggregate wherever you want without prohibitions like you can't aggregate and then fragment the aggregate 
there's no prohibitions on things like that. So I would suggest looking at VVC and AV1 as as the uh, models for for the payload format. Um, and I'm I'm just curious what, when you say atlas data, you just mean the geometry of of where the rectangles are in the atlas, or do you mean the actual pixels of the atlas, which I thought was the video data? Yeah, yeah. so the, the naming is very confusing here, and I wasn't too happy about it in the first place. But atlas data here essentially means how do you position these different patches on the other video component. So all of the pixel data is in the video components, like the geometry and the colors of the pixels and all that stuff. All that Alice stuff. is just bounding boxes, right? It's bounding boxes yeah. and the projection formats that I used, kind of how to project yes. uh, the path boxes back into the 3D space correctly, because we don't necessarily always limit ourselves to orthogonal projections, so like square bounding boxes. You could yeah. consider other, other type of bound, bound, bounding boxes if you're dealing yeah. with different types of media. And the other aspect is you also need depth uh, uh, depth video streams, and I know all the standards have them, but I don't know if the RTP uh, payloads are are really well defined for the depth streams. Uh, um, I, I haven't seen interoperable depth streams in, in RTP yet. Maybe somebody else has tried it and, and has it working, but I haven't seen you know declaring a, a depth stream interoperably in, in RTP payload formats. That's interesting. What what makes it so special? I thought it was could be just like video encoded depth information. You would have no concept that it's depth, right? Yeah, I could I could maybe say it's a, the profile is mono. You know, maybe mm -hmm. you can if some codecs have a mono profile, okay, then maybe I have a hint that it's not you know not regular textures. But you don't know that it's explicitly depth, and you don't know it's bound to this other uh, you know this other video surface. Right. You don't know the geometry relation between that and the other video yeah. surface. Okay, yeah, so that's obviously part of the things that we're trying to solve here with defining this um, uh, like grouping of these different components and specifying what each video stream actually contains. Yeah, I think I think the, the grouping part is probably going to be the most um, the tricky part of it. Also the synchronization part, because obviously it doesn't, you know, it doesn't do you any good to have, you know, a, a, a uh, atlas and a depth stream and a primary video that are, you know, 300 milliseconds out from each other. That'd probably be a terrible time. So you need to make sure that those are properly synchronized with each other, which is sometimes tricky in RTP. So that's right. another thing that needs to be. Yeah. And ideally, we'd like to um, keep, like, we, we can't afford to drop one frame from one stream because that would mean that we can't re reconstruct the entire frame because of that one dropped component frame. Yeah, and, but yeah, I think, yeah, I think that's, so there's some interesting work here. Um, so, it sounds, so it sounds to me like this is, you know, interesting if people are interested in it, but it's not mature enough for working group adoption. So I'd say keep, you know, soliciting comments from the community and uh, keep and come back, you know, and then keep, keep, keep working on it. I mean, assuming you want to, I'm not gonna, again, I'm not your boss, but you know, as long as you think it's interesting, keep working on it. Okay, sure. So, what is the process here? So, I go out, or solicit yeah. the comments, and bring it back the next time, yeah. or something. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. All right. Good. Yeah. Okay. And finally, we're a little bit on time, but finally, it's skip. Uh, hello. Hello, your you have a, your background noise is very bad. No, oh, is it really? Yeah. That's in a conference room. Uh, sounds like are you like using a microphone built into a laptop with a fan or something? No, it's actually got a headset, but I don't know why I'm getting that noise. Dan, can you take this? Dan? I'm not sure he's here. I see him on. I moved into a conference room because it was noisy where I was. This is what I get for that. Hang on. Hello, 
Anyway, we only have a few minutes. So if you want to just talk, go ahead. It's, it's, it'll be, you know, we'll manage. Are you still there? I lost. Uh, Dan, uh, can you take over? Why don't you project the slides, Jonathan? Uh, yeah, I think this is the slide. Uh, I think this is the, the main. I mean, the, mo many of the slides were um, were repeats of the ones we saw in at one twelve. But I think this is the first one. There was a call for adoption. Right. There were a number of people, a number of different groups, you know, in the community doing this, supporting it. So we agreed to adopt it. Um, and then there were some comments. Um, I think these are the relevant bits. Um, but the marker bit and the uh, um, so yeah, I think the, the authors need to re, you know could resubmit as a working group document. Yes. Um, and yeah, so it starts at slide fifty one is where the uh, comments and yeah. updates. Yeah, that's what that's what should be what I'm presenting now. Yeah, so. I guess for this purpose, the main thing we want to know is whether the working group accepts these updates or whether there are comments or objections to them, as these are the proposals for the changes mm. prior to submission. Um, Hello? So, hi. Hi, this is uh, Dan Hansen. Sorry, I'm having having audio problems with and all sorts of issues with our network network at work here. So, um, mm. I'm gonna go ahead and we're going uh, from slide fifty one. Any questions just, that you have, or, or mm. yeah, we're just trying to get uh, uh, going starting from slide fifty one because we basically wanted to understand whether does anyone in the working group has any comments on your proposed resolutions? Otherwise, you can assume that they're good. I just make them and resubmit as a working group document. Right. Yeah, those are addressing the questions that we had. Um, again, there was a question about should and shall in section 4.1. And we certainly agree that we can just change that to shall. Again, the text was it was it was should only because we we're trying to support some legacy allow some wiggle room for some legacy products that we have. Um, so, but we certainly have, but because we're a closed, uh, closed community, we can certainly control that information. Mm -hmm. We have no problem changing it to shall. Yeah. Um, for the 30 and sometimes it's, compliance. sometimes it's, sometimes it's useful to say something like shall do, but should accept non-compliant because the old implementations may be out there. That might be useful. You know, there's a difference in what you send and what you're willing to receive. So that might be a useful right. distinction to make. Right. Mm. Right. Mm. Okay. Mm. And they had a question. There was a question about being able to repacketize skip uh, the skip traffic. Um, we're saying no because it, I think the question was asking if the skips is like a like a constant stream of data, which possibly mm. could be, but it's not really. I mean, skip is more of a a two-way conversation, like a phone call, but it's an encrypted stream, so it's it doesn't lend itself to like a constant audio stream or something like that mm -hmm. streaming service. So we're going to put a comment in there, basically saying that network network devices should not attempt to repacketize skip mm -hmm. for that. So okay. and then and again, again, the marker bit was changed to shall again because if we hadn't really defined the use of marker bit previously in some of our internal specifications for how to use the marker bit. Um, again, the reason why this should and not a shall in the original draft submission. So um, that's what well, we had certainly have no problem with changing it to shall at this point. So um, go I, to the I, next slide. I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, I just had a question about the use of video. So uh, the skip documents say you use RTCP um, in the case of video, do you use all of the RTCP feedback messages like PLI and, and stuff like that? Um, 
we video is we're very early on in the video stream uh, oh, for video specifications. I know some people have, again we we basically try to encapsulate like an H.264 stream is what we've defined so far. So whatever mechanisms that H.264 would use to you know using our TCP and things like that. That um, again we just we're basically providing an encrypted stream on top of of what the actual data would be. So we try to just enforce, you know, especially even with the audio, with the MELT and the G729D, um, that whatever messages that you would use natively for those mm -hmm. codecs, you'd also use in this stream. So, um, Does it use bundle? So does it bundle everything together, the audio and the video and the RTP and our TCP box as well? In our initial specification, we did not. We kind of okay. kept them as audio yeah. and video as two separate streams. Yeah. Um, going forward, we'd like to, you know, as a working group, we're going to discuss how to go forward and try to do a combined stream, but that, that hasn't been defined at this point. So. All right. Um, I guess this, and for section. 5.1 and 5.2, the IANA, the RTP drafts, um, RTP registration. Um, there's a question about why we chose NA for interoperability, uh, interoperability considerations. And again, that was only because we felt that because there was no previous skip registration that it didn't apply. Um, maybe I'm misinterpreting what this field is supposed to mean. Uh, anybody can chime in on that. I think it's more about, you know, if different, you know, certain different other things that, you know, very different implementations need to specifically be aware of um, in that sense, right. interoperability in okay. that sense. So, yeah. but, right. Okay. Hmm. Okay. And the last section, the, the last question about moving the narratives, uh, the, the references to skip 214 and 210 to the informative informational section, there's no problem with that. That's an easy easy change mm -hmm. for that. Um, again, because as a comment was mentioned that you don't really need to have those specifications in order to support this. Um, it's more informational. So we certainly have no problem moving those, uh, yeah. moving those to the end of to the informational section. So, and then we'll change the name uh, as was recommended and submit a, a draft, uh, updated draft here shortly, unless there's any more comments or questions that folks have for this. I don't think so. And um, so yeah, and I think that's probably everything. So thank you. And uh, I guess so yeah, so yeah, I think I'll go on those action items. So it's just thank you to everybody. Here and a reminder to everybody: um, do okay. um, put your name on the note on the notes um, tab, which is at the back in the his beginning of the chat history uh, for the virtual blue sheets. I think we only had we had like thirty people here at peak, and only like seventeen on the sheet. So if you can put your name there, please do. And thank you, everybody. And we will see you either virtually or in person, depending on Vienna. Thank you very much. Okay. Good day.